So three, let's test some sodium ion batteries. Why not when I have two battery analyzers now? These are sodium ion batteries made by Sequat and they say 18650, which is the same size as lithium ion batteries typically. 3 volts, 1300 mAh. Apparently a lower voltage than a lithium ion battery, which is typically 3.7 volts. And also the capacity is lower, so far sodium ion batteries have a lower energy density. But of course they're quite new, they might improve in the future. And even if their energy density never gets better than lithium ion, they still might have some other advantages. For example being less flammable, lasting for more cycles, being cheaper because they use more abundant materials and being more environmentally friendly. Because the materials in them might be less harmful and their mining and processing might be less environmentally damaging. Now let's take a look at some specifications. The nominal voltage is 3 volts, which typically is about the average voltage during the discharge. Here is the capacity, the working voltage, energy density, 3000 cycles, that sounds good. The internal resistance less than 20 milliohms, the weight, the dimensions, more or less a typical 18650. Maximum charging and discharging rates for various temperatures. At optimum temperature the discharge rate up to 3C, which would be 3900 milliamps. And the charging rate 1C, 1300 milliamps. And the battery is charged to 3.95 volts. And the cutoff is the 0.05C, which basically means the charging stops at 65 milliamps for this capacity. And it's discharged down to 1.5 volts. So as you can see the voltages are different than lithium ion and you can't use a lithium ion charger for these. And also the voltage goes lower so appliances designed for lithium ion might not work with sodium ion batteries. Before charging them let's see what's the voltage they are shipped at. They seem to be shipped at 2.54 volts and the other one again 2.54 volts. So these seem to be partially charged. And some sources say they can be discharged to 0 volts for safe shipping, but the specification of these says 1.5 volts minimum. But of course there are different versions of sodium ion batteries. Several companies are making them and there might be big differences between them. Let's charge them using a bench power supply at half an amp. So let's set both channels of my bench power supply to 3.95 volts. And the current limit is to half an amp. Now they are both charging at half an amp and the voltages are going up on them. Of course at some point it goes from a constant current charge to a constant voltage charge. The current is declining now and here are the voltages. Now let's call it 65 milliamps. Now the batteries are connected to the battery analyzers and let's discharge them at 0.2C which is 0.26 amps. For 1300 milliamp hours, down to 1.5 volts. And let's start the discharging. And they're discharging now. And the energy is counting up in watt hours. And the capacity in milliamp hours or amp hours. It seems very balanced so far. Still very close. This one is discharging slightly faster. And now the batteries are discharged down to 1.5 volts. Of course when the analyzers stop drawing current, the voltage goes back up a bit. And the energy in the batteries was 4.1 and 4.19 in watt hours. And the capacity in amp hours 1.39 and 1.42. Or 1390 and 1420 milliamp hours. Which is nice, it's more than it claims and also there is not much difference between the cells. The analyzers don't show the average voltage of the battery during the discharge, but you can just divide the watt hours by the amp hours and you get 2.95 volts average voltage, which is very close to the nominal 3 and a little bit might be dropped on the cables and the connections. The average voltage of the other one is more or less the same. Now I will charge them again and try a 1C discharge. Now the batteries are charged again and this time let's discharge them at 1.3 amps. Again down to 1.5 volts. Now of course the voltage is going down way faster. And still over 1300 milliamp hours even at a faster discharge rate. This is nice and the energy 
3.879 for what hours. And this time I put the batteries the other way to prove the differences in the batteries, not the analyzers. Now let's try a one amp charge. Now discharging at the maximum current of the analyzers, 2.56 amps, which is basically 2C for these cells, down to 1.5 volts again, and discharging. Of course as this current the voltage quickly goes down, and there was also an immediate voltage drop when I turned it on because of the internal resistance of the batteries, but also the resistance of the cables and connections, but it seems quite balanced. And the capacity doesn't really seem to get lower with a faster discharge, as it does with a lot of other batteries, and the energy, and also the charging rate doesn't seem to make the measured capacity any lower. Now let's try to record the charge curve at half an amp on an oscilloscope. 1000 seconds per division. And here's the charging curve of the two cells. It initially goes up steeper, then slower, and then again steeper. So it's basically an S-curve. Virtually all batteries have S-curved charging and discharging curves. But here the voltage goes much steeper up in comparison with lithium-ion. Lithium-ion curve is flatter and lithium-iron phosphate even more so. Sodium-iron ones seem to have a steeper curve, which makes it easier to determine the state of charge of the battery. But the disadvantage is that the charging circuitry and the load has to be able to work with a wider range of voltages. And also the typical plateau is much shorter here than in lithium-ion. And now the discharge curve at half an amp down to 1.5 volts. And it's discharging now. It's discharging the batteries in a recording. So the batteries are discharged down to 1.5 volts. Of course when it no longer draws current it goes a bit back up. The energy in the batteries was this. And capacity. And the discharge curve sort of looks like a mirror image of the charge curve, but not exactly. This weird bump is much more pronounced. This one looks weirder, it's not a typical S shape. Let's try to put the mirror image of the charge curve over the discharge curve, to be able to compare the shapes. Both the same current, half an amp, but the charging takes a bit longer than the discharging because of the losses in the battery. And now a comparison of a lithium-ion and a sodium-ion charging curve. Of course the lithium ion is a higher capacity, so I charged it at a higher current to make both charge roughly in the same time. And for a better comparison, stretching the lithium ion curve to both start and end at the same spot. You can see lithium ion is a higher voltage and it's also much flatter. And now let's compare the discharge curves of sodium ion versus lithium ion, discharging at these currents down to these voltages, and starting the discharge. It's discharging. And now the cells are discharged, this was the energy in them, and the empowers. And here's the comparison of the lithium-ion versus sodium-ion discharge curve. But of course each of them finished the discharge at a different time. So I modified the picture, I normalized the horizontal scale to show the state of charge from 100 to 0 percent. I believe this is the most valuable set of curves in this video. I decided to make one more curve, where basically the curves of both sodium-ion cells as the maximum current of the analyzers. And the results of the measurement. And of course the curve here. And these are the discharge curves at almost 2C discharge rate. And then I did the last test in the same conditions as the first test, to see if the capacity changes after several cycles. One got slightly higher, one slightly lower, less than one percent differences. Just random fluctuations, nothing statistically significant. And here is the list of all tests, with the measured milliamp hour capacities and what our energy is in the batteries, with the discharge rate and the charging current prior to the test. So that's it, an interesting new battery technology. The energy density isn't really for vehicles or portable devices, but it could be a greener and more economical solution for something like a large-scale stationary storage. And if you like my videos, please consider supporting this channel on Patreon, using the thanks button or subscribing. And big thanks to all of you who already support me, because this keeps my channel running.